Welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox where we look at the nuts and bolts of self-employed life in the UK. I'm Andy Mack and I've been self-employed for a long, long time. Over the course of this video series, we've been looking at building a WordPress-based website from scratch. A WordPress-based site gives you a lot of flexibility for future development of your website. And if you've been playing along at home, you should now have a fairly operational website, but it'll be very, very basic. To start doing anything a little bit more fancy with WordPress, you're gonna need plugins. And plugins are designed to make WordPress do things that it can't normally do as a fresh installation. In an ideal world, I would say you want to limit the number of plugins on your site to a maximum of about 20. A normal-ish number of plugins is between 10 and 20 plugins. I'm gonna show you my favorite 12 plugins that I use on almost every WordPress website, and hopefully that's enough to get you up and running in the world of WordPress plugins. Let's get this done. So, as per usual, get yourself logged into the WordPress admin console for your website, and just on the left-hand side, click plugins. And at the minute, that should be completely empty for you. If you've done all of the steps that we've already talked about in earlier videos, you should have deleted the default plugins that come with your site. If you haven't already done that, do that now. And I'm gonna tell you about a set of plugins that are like as kind of a base level set of things that work for most stuff that I like to do on a WordPress website. Plugins can be installed essentially in two different ways. First of all, the easy way, you just go to this plugin section and you click add new at the top. Ignore these default things that it'll show you as standard. <laughs> Gutenberg, that's a new block based editor. <laughs> it's down to two stars on the reviews. Oh, give it up. But anyway, if you wanted to install a plugin, all you do is go to the search plugin thing at the top here. Let's say we wanted to install the contact form plugin. Contact form. 7 is the one I normally use. I'll talk about that in a minute. You just search for it. You don't press enter or anything. You literally just that dynamically changes as you type into the box. And there it is there. Now this is already installed, but if you wanted to install a different one, you would just click install now. After you've installed a plugin, you then need to activate the plugin. I'll show you that in a minute with a different plugin. A word of warning though, generally speaking with plugins, is that a bad plugin can cause damage to your website. It can potentially open up your site to hackers, and it's certainly not a thing to play around with on a big website unless you've done some testing first. Generally speaking, if a plugin has lots and lots of installations, like here the contact form ones had 5 million active installations, this one's 100,000, 80,000, really good reviews, but just bear in mind, you know, it's like anything, Amazon or anything. Plugins are as susceptible to fake reviews as any other website is. So just bear that in mind. But if you've got 100,000 active installations and 104 five-star reviews, you can probably say that that is a decent plugin and it's probably going to be safe to use. Until you're confident using different plugins and how to research them and things like that. I would stick to ones that have been used on a lot of different websites that they're compatible with the version of WordPress that you've got and it tells you that in the plugin. Also make sure it's still getting updated as well because you'll get some plugins where maybe it used to be good but no one's bothered updating it for the last year or so and in which case is it going to be vulnerable to hacking attempts and things like that. So generally speaking, if you've got decent reviews and it's installed on lots of websites, it's probably going to be absolutely fine. Plugins, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, plugins are generally free. Um, you will get some plugins where you install it and then the base functionality is free, but then to make it do more advanced stuff, you have to pay for it. But as such, because plugins are free, don't think that you're entitled to any kind of free support from the person who's written it. I'm amazed on contact form 7 here. It, it, this always used to have five-star reviews and it's dropped a little bit. And it's dropped simply because they removed functionality with an older version of reCAPTCHA by Google, basically. 
and people went mental about this. And you'll see it's now got loads of one-star reviews of people moaning on, uh, oh, and no one's given us support, and uh, let's have a look. Here's a typical one-star review that someone's leaving, which you can just completely ignore this. It's just that they've spat their dummy out. The form resets itself for no reason, and there are zero people to help. Waste of time. And then someone's actually replied, saying resets itself, as in can you explain what happens, and they've never bothered getting back, and they probably never will. If you install a plugin that's completely free, you are not entitled to any support whatsoever from the person who kindly wrote that free plugin for you. And that goes across the board with pretty much anything you get for free in life. So basically, if you're installing a plugin and you're not sure whether or not to use it, do have a read of the reviews that it's getting, because if it's full of one-star reviews from moany, self-entitled people, then I would really take those with a pinch of salt. And likewise, have a read of the five-star reviews, and if they obviously look like kind of fake reviews, then take those with a pinch of salt as well. But Contact Form 7, for example, is still the most popular contact form used on WordPress by a country mile. Five million plus installations of this plugin. And personally, I'd like to thank Takayuki Miyoshi, and apologies if I've mispronounced your name, but I'd like to thank him for all the hard work he's put into this completely free plugin over the many, many years that this has been available on WordPress. And all people do is moan on about the fact that he's taken out support for an obsolete part of Google Recapture. Anyway, where was it? So, there's two ways of installing plugins. You can either search for the plugin in here to do whatever you need it to do, or if you've bought a paid plugin from a website, then often what will happen is you'll end up with a zip file that you have to upload the plugin to your website. And if you have to upload a plugin, you do it through this little upload plugin box here. And you'll see if you have a plugin in a zip format, you may install it by uploading it here. And you just click choose file and then do install from there. So that's how you install plugin. Most of the time, you're going to be doing it just by searching from this little box here and installing free plugins because we all love free plugins. So let me run you through this list of the plugins that I am currently using in 2019 on the Small Business Toolbox website. Of course, we've already talked about the classic editor. Contact Form 7, we've already briefly talked about. So Contact Form, all that is, I'll just show you on my Gosforth Handyman site. This down the left here, this is a contact form. And if you want to add a form onto your website to allow people to contact you, I would advise that you never put your email address written in plain text anywhere on your website because it will be picked up by spam robots and that email address will become unusable from the amount of spam that you receive. And that applies no matter what web platform you're on. Never put your email address in plain copyable text on a website. Always try and disguise it in some way. Um, the best bet is to use a contact form. Now, one of the things that you have to be aware with contact forms is that as soon as you have anything that allows you to type information into a box, it will become a target for spammers and robots that try to send you spam emails automatically via your contact form. And there's a few different ways of protecting yourself from that. You'll have probably seen the little I am not a robot tick box that you get on websites and things. And there's various other methods that get used to prevent contact forms getting used to send you spam. The problem with a lot of them is that they litter your site with cookies. And I'm trying, where possible, to minimise cookie use on my website because I don't want to bother you with cookie warnings. And if I can keep cookie use to an absolute minimum then I don't need to have annoying cookie pop-ups on the website. So just be aware that a lot of the recapture methods that get used use cookies, and that might then mean that you have to have cookie notifications on your website. That's a whole other topic we'll talk about in another video. Anyway, so to get around that whole problem, I have the Contact Form 7 Honeypot installed. And this is kind of a cookie-free way of preventing spam from coming into your website. I'll talk about it in a separate video, 
but the honeypot is good for websites that don't get like crazy amounts of traffic you still get a certain amount of spam coming through but nowhere near the amount of spam that you would get if you didn't use any form of capture on your website a capture by the way is a completely automated public turing test to tell computers and humans apart you don't need to know how they work all you need to know is that if you have forms on your website you're going to probably need some form of capture to stop those forms getting used by spamming robots around the internet. Insert headers and footers. This is really handy if you're going to be using Google Analytics and we're going to come on to that in a separate video, but it basically allows you to insert the code that you need for analytics software to work. Page sidebar for 2017. We've briefly talked about that before. In a standard installation of the 2017 theme, you only get the sidebar, this is this bit down the right hand side, you only get that showing up on blog post type areas of your site. And if you just have normal pages, then that sidebar doesn't show. So if you want a sidebar on normal pages, you have to install a plugin for it. And that is what the page sidebar for 2017 does. And it works great. Really simple SSL, we'll cover that off in a separate video when we install a security certificate so that we get the little padlock at the top left of your browser window and it just means that you're running on an HTTPS site instead of an HTTP site. It's a whole separate topic for a separate time. So feel free to install that and leave it deactivated. I wouldn't activate that until we've got a SSL certificate installed. Redirection plugin, this is a really handy plugin to have installed if you're ever going to be changing the URL of one of your pages or posts and it just lets you redirect it to the new URL of the page or post and it stops you getting errors on search engines where the page can't be displayed and all that sort of thing. We'll go into that in a separate video. Starbucks is really simple little plugin. All that does is add this little box at the bottom of my articles, which is a little kind of biography box with a picture of me, and you can have it linking to your Twitter and all that sort of thing. And that's done with the Starbucks plugin. Dead simple. Probably the most important plugin to have installed is some sort of security plugin. And I'm now using WordFence. I used to use WordFence a long time ago and I switched to a different plugin for security, but I ended up having some problems with it and I've gone back to WordFence. WordFence is probably the most popular security plugin on WordPress. Get it installed and it will help to keep your installation of WordPress secure. I'll cover off how to use it on a separate video. Too much to go into on this video. WP YouTube Lite. This is a really nice little lightweight plugin. If you've got a website where you're embedding YouTube videos onto your website, again, I'll cover off what it does on a separate video, but it basically makes pages load much, much faster because it's not loading in all of the background YouTube gubbins when you embed a video onto a page on a website and it just does things more efficiently and a bit more securely. It cuts down on cookies and third-party cookies and all that. Great little plugin. WPS Hide Login, it's not essential, but all that does is it lets you change the default web address for your admin console, because obviously any WordPress installation, if you know they're running on WordPress, all you have to do is go to their web address slash WP admin, and you'll go to their login page for their website. And if you don't want people to even get to that page, then you can kind of change the address of that page. But you know, it's like one of these things like putting a sticker on the window of your car to say, my car has a car alarm. And that'll probably put some people off from breaking into your car. But really the best thing you can do is to lock your doors. And we'll cover off locking your doors in WordPress in the next video. And then finally, Yoast SEO. Yoast is really the most standard SEO, search engine optimization plugin on WordPress. Everything to do with SEO and trying to get your website as friendly as possible for search engines so that your site gets shown in search engines. Yoast is a plugin that helps you do that. 
There are many other SEO plugins out there and it's also perfectly possible to have a website that ranks really well on search engines without having to have Yoast installed. Yoast just makes life a lot easier. And of course, there are other plugins that you're going to end up installing over time to make your site do very specific things. But I'm finding that this set of 12 or so plugins is a really good kind of starting point for most websites. And then over time, you know, plugins change. And this is why I'm showing the plugins that I've got installed now and not the plugins that I installed a year ago, because plugins do change over time. New plugins come out that are really good and you want to install them. Old plugins stop getting supported and stop getting updated. A couple of really important tips with plugins. So first of all, always keep your plugins up to date and WordPress will tell you when your plugins need to be updated. You can tell on my site, everything's up to date. There's no warnings that plugins are out of date, but when plugins need to be updated, update them. And my second tip is to uninstall plugins that you're not using. It's really easy to reinstall a plugin later down the line, but there's really no point in having plugins sitting there that aren't doing anything. And that's why I'm saying, for example, with a really simple SSL plugin, you can install it and leave it deactivated if you want. I would suggest just not installing it until we sort out the SSL certificate a little bit later down the line. Another thing to consider as well, everyone who's been using WordPress for a while will have a different set of plugins that they like to use. There's no right and wrong in terms of the plugins that you use on your site. These are the plugins that I use at the moment. If you come to me in a year's time, I'll probably tell you to use a different set of plugins. Oh, and I briefly mentioned before, when you install a plugin, you have to activate it. I'll show you on the page sidebar one here. I'll just deactivate it. And if I now go onto a page on the Small Business Toolbox website and do refresh F5, you see how the sidebars now completely disappeared. That's because I've deactivated the page sidebar plugin. So when you install a brand new plugin, you'll need to activate it. And all you do is click the little activate button. And now if I go back to that page, press F5 to refresh it. And now I've got the sidebar back again. Simple as that. Plugins in a nutshell. I hope you found that useful. Pop in the comments below if you've got any favorite WordPress plugins that you like to use, or if you've had any problems with the plugins that I've mentioned today. Once you've got your WordPress website all up and running and looking all nice, the last thing you want is for it to be hacked by someone and destroyed. So next time we're gonna have a quick look at backups and security. Until then, best of luck on your small business journey and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.